Most owners and trainers leave injections to the veterinarian, with several good reasons. However, situations may arise where the horse requires either emergency treatment or ongoing treatment after the veterinarian leaves and the job falls to the primary caretakers. Injecting any drug directly into the horse's bloodstream should never be taken lightly. This method of administration carries with it a much greater chance of side effects. There is also a risk of accidental injection into an artery instead of a vein, which may cause adverse drug reactions or prolonged bleeding. Finally, failure to get the entire dose of the drug directly into the vein, resulting in leakage around the vein, may cause damage to tissues in the area or to the vein. For those of you who are faced with the task as part of follow-up care after the veterinarian leaves, make sure the veterinarian has thoroughly instructed you and observed your technique before he or she leaves. The large vein of the neck, the jugular vein, is used for injections. This is located in the deep groove between muscle bellies of the neck. Here are the two large muscle bellies, so it's located right in this groove here. Now, you will need someone to handle the horse while the injection is being given. Twitching should not be necessary, except in extreme cases. Drop the medication sterilely. First, wipe the top of the bottles with alcohol. Then, use a new sterile needle and syringe each time. Inject a small amount of air into the bottle, then withdraw the exact amount of medication needed into the syringe. Wipe the injection area with alcohol or cotton or a gauze sponge until the cotton no longer shows any dirt. Always insert the needle no higher than halfway up the neck. The closer you go to the head, the closer the artery is to the vein and the greater the risk of injecting into the artery. Place the fingers of your left hand or reverse this procedure if you're left-handed into the groove to apply pressure on the vein, causing it to fill. Insert the needle attached to the syringe into the vein at approximately a 25 degree angle to the skin. Alternatively, you can insert the needle without the syringe into the vein at the same angle. Confirm that you're in the vein and not the artery and then attach the syringe. Draw back on the syringe to make certain it fills easily with blood and then slowly but steadily make the injection. At the end of the injection, draw back again to make certain you are still in the vein. Reinject the withdrawn blood and then withdraw the needle and apply pressure for approximately one minute. When injecting a large volume, say over 10 cc's, periodically check that the needle is still in the vein by withdrawing a small amount of blood. If you don't get blood back, hold off the vein again and reposition the needle. This can be done without removing the needle entirely from the skin. When giving an intravenous injection, beware of possible complications if the injection is done incorrectly. Dangers include a greater chance of side effects, risk of injection into an artery instead of a vein, risk of an adverse drug reaction and prolonged bleeding, risk of damage to the tissue and or the vein. When giving an intravenous injection, clean the top of the bottle with alcohol. Use a new sterile needle each time. Inject air into the bottle, then withdraw exact dose. Wipe the injection area with alcohol. Apply fingers on the vein and apply pressure. Insert the needle at a 25 degree angle. Draw blood back into the syringe. Slowly and steadily make the injection. Draw blood back at the end of the injection to confirm that the needle is still in the vein. Reinject the withdrawn blood. Withdraw needle and apply pressure for one minute. When injecting over 10 cc's, periodically check that the needle is still in the vein. There are four major safe areas for intramuscular injections, that is on both sides of the neck and in the muscles of the hind quarters. The areas are mapped out on this horse in yellow tape. Injection too low on the neck comes dangerously close to the bones of the cervical spine. Stay away from the spine. 
Don't inject too close to the shoulder either. That could cause nerve damage. And what about in the main area? Injection too close to the main will deposit medication in the tendon tissue where it's not well absorbed. In the hind quarters, you want to stay in the middle of the large muscle running between the tail and the hock area. Too high and you're too close to the bone. Too low and you enter tendon. Prepare the skin in the same way as for intravenous injections. Wipe the area with alcohol wipes, right? Right. Then, using a fresh needle, insert the needle only into the target area of the muscle. This should be done quickly and forcefully, kind of like throwing a dart. Insert the needle for its entire length, then attach the syringe, draw back slightly on the plunger. If the syringe fills with blood, reposition the needle. However, it is common to get a little bit of blood back on an IM injection if the muscle was tense. If the plunger is very difficult to pull back and you only get just a few drops of blood, go ahead with the injection. Inject no more than 15 cc's per site. Withdraw the needle and syringe together and hold pressure for 10 to 15 seconds. Use the same technique when performing hind end injections. Stand at approximately hip level on the side of the horse facing the tail. Don't stand directly behind the horse to avoid being kicked and always keep the handler on the same side as the person doing the injection. Should the horse act up, pulling on his head will immediately swing his hindquarters away from the person doing the injection. When the horse will be receiving a prolonged course of intramuscular injections, it's very important to rotate the injection sites, left neck, left hind, right neck, right hind, to avoid the areas becoming too sore. In foals or lightly muscled horses, this may still become a problem. In that case, there are alternative sites that can be used for intramuscular injections. However, these are usually smaller muscles, muscles located closer to dangerous areas to inject, and or muscles where any collection of fluid or an abscess could not easily drain. For these reasons, seek a veterinarian's advice about alternative injection sites. The choice made will depend both on the medication being injected and on how the individual horse is built. When making an intramuscular injection, the safe areas are right and left neck, right and left hindquarters. Areas to avoid are too low on the neck, too close to the shoulder, too close to the mane, too high on the hindquarter, too low on the hindquarters. When giving an intramuscular injection, wipe the skin with alcohol. Use a fresh needle. Insert entire length of needle in target area, quickly and forcefully. Inject no more than 15 cc's per site. Attach syringe and draw back slightly. Inject sight. Withdraw needle and syringe. Hold pressure for 15 seconds. For prolonged treatment, rotate injection sites. 